This is a, a wonderful day the Lord has made for us. And you are welcome in this wonderful program. And I'll be ministering to you. And what I'll be ministering tonight, I'll be speaking to you about what God wants to show you. And this is the same message on Hazon. God has power, and his power cannot be challenged. Oh, yes. And I want you to know this, that tonight you are right in the presence of the anointing. And this anointing will break what has been breaking you. This anointing will destroy what has been destroying you. I see a way being made for you. In the name of Jesus. All right, I want you to go into um, the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2 to 3. Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse number 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. This is the biggest problem we're having with you. So many people tonight who are watching me, God gave them an idea. God gave them a vision. The problem that we have is what must be done when God shows you a vision. When God shows you an idea. The first thing that must be done is patience. What have I said? Patience. God spoke to Abraham when he was 79. He said, you shall have a child. And we have people today who God said something to them. This is what you shall be. And you know, you know, if I may ask some of you here, you have great ideas. And trust you me, most of those ideas came direct from God and he gave them to you. But some people will die without seeing the ideas because they did not do something. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Those ideas, I pray tonight that before you die, you shall see them working and happening around you. I'm telling you, right now, if, you, if I may ask people who are watching me, tell me they, they have ideas. God showed them something and they think it is themselves. The Bible said there is a spirit in man. The spirit of God giveth understanding, inspires that spirit. Do you hear me? <laughs> Are you following someone? Are you here, right? Tell the neighbor next to you to say, you must understand this. So tonight, I want you to see this. The Bible says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Whenever you hear the word appointed time, we are dealing with kairos. Do you hear me? Yes. We are dealing with what? Kairos. kairos. Kairos, it is time which has been set. That when this time comes, this person, what I showed them must happen. So the Bible says what you see, the vision you have, it waits. It is waiting for the what? For the appointed time, the kairos. Now, can you imagine the prophet comes now and he tells you to say, this is the time for vision. This is the time. This is the time you have been waiting for. It's the time when what you've been seeing must begin to be fulfilled. Must begin to manifest. Raise your hands and say, my visions will come to pass. What I see, my ideas will manifest. Say in the name of Jesus. Do you know, do you know what happened? God had a plan. Do you hear me? He said, I will send Moses to go and save the people. Did you hear that? God had a plan and he said, I will send who? Do you know what happened? Moses. 
he was living in the palace. But one single day, he saw that an Egyptian was attacking a fellow Jew from Israel. He said, wait, wait a minute. I live in the palace, but I cannot allow this to happen. And, and him, as a man, he knew that it was his calling to defend the people. Moses calling, he didn't realize it in the bush when the fire was burning, no. He knew God had called him. But the problem is, the people he was delivering did not know that he was their deliverer. Go to the scripture. The Bible says what? The Bible says, for he supposed that his brethren would have understood. Wait, let's go to NIV. 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 He says what? He says, Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. Do you know some of you here, God, God is trying to use you to set free your family. But your own family, they are not realizing it. Yes. I didn't hear me. The Bible says God was using who? Moses. To do what? To rescue them. But the people he was rescuing, they didn't even know. And guess what happened? The same man he was delivering are the same people who went to report to government officials that Moses, uh, I was fighting with an Egyptian and Moses came and killed him. The man he was delivering. Wow. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Let's start from verse 23. Okay. Verse 23 says what? In verse 23 it says, when Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. You hear that? He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. His only people. So he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him. To rescue them, but they did not. Right now, they're even, they're even gossiping about you. They're like, does he think properly? They think you're useless. They don't realize that very soon God is about to put you on top. And if they will ever have a car, it will be you buying them a nice car. Receive. receive it in the name of Jesus. So when God had the plan of Moses, I want you to see this. They could not see it. And I want you to hear this. They could not see it. They couldn't. And we have even people in church. People in church. Someone said, oh, uh, Nowadays, I, I, just feel, I just feel like I should just not be praying at the church anymore. Not realizing that God is using me to rescue him. If you don't realize, my friend, <laughs> if you don't realize, and, and what happened eventually, what happened when Moses left, what happened? They, they began, they, they were being used to work the whole day. Remove hot bricks with bare hands. Because they did not realize that that man, God was trying to use him to rescue them. So they were like, ah, so should we go? And then they were now working hard using bare hands, removing bricks. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Check verse 23 in TPT. TPT translation. When Moses turned 40, his heart was tired for his people, the Israelites. In verse 24. One day he saw one of our people being violently mistreated. 
So he came to his rescue. And with his own hands, Moses murdered the abusive Egyptian. Moses hoped that when the people realized how he had rescued one of their own, they would recognize him as their deliverer. How wrong he was. He was so wrong to think like that. Let me say something to you that is very important. When the devil sees you as a deliverer, he comes after you. Some of you, God has showed you things. Don't think what God has showed you, he has showed everyone. Moses thought what he was seeing, that God was to use him, everyone in Israel would support him. But instead, they wanted to kill his vision. Trust you me, you have a vision. There is something in you. There's an idea in you. When you sit sometimes like this, you see a house. Sometimes you see the top of a car that you will be driving. Some, some of you see a business that God is showing you. Where you're going and where you're heading. But the enemy is trying to stop you like he was trying to stop Moses. But we are coming against him tonight. Any vision destroyer, any vision killer, we rebuke tonight in the name of Jesus. We oppose tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Say my vision will come to pass. You know, when I close my eyes as a prophet, as your prophet, when I close my eyes like this, I see shops. I see boutiques which are not yet happening on people. I see contracts. I see nice jobs. I see opportunities opening of people. I see properties. I see tall buildings. And ask God, what is this? God said, these things are supposed to be on them. But they're not praying for these things. We pray for what we see. Amen. The Bible says, watch and pray. Amen. After seeing, pray. You didn't hear me. The Bible says what? Because after watching it, the enemy may also watch it. Don't just see visions and stay quiet. Say, my vision will come to pass. Some of you, God is showing you exactly how he's going to use you. How God will use you in the ministry. You hear that? God is actually showing you, like, properly. How he will use you. And the devil says, we must destroy this woman. Now, Moses, <laughs> he thought that they would understand him like, oh, God is using him. The Bible says, how wrong was he? The same people came after his vision. I am here to tell you, the reason why most of you, your visions are not happening, they are spiritual resistances which the enemy has put up against your vision. Do you know before Moses was born, what happened? Before Moses was born, the enemy had information that Moses was coming. And the enemy went to the king. The devil, at night, went to the king. And they said, now make a law that every baby boy must be killed. You think who inspired the king to make that decision? Tell me, who inspired him? He had information of the vision. Some of you, your, your, your baby, your baby, your miracle, he has information it is about to be born. And he's coming after your vision. Some say, I stop you now. See, the way you are talking is like you are friends with the devil. Stop him, proper. I stop you now. So I resist you in the name of Jesus. So what is about to be born will be born in the name of Jesus. I rebuke any demonic abortion, any demonic miscarriage. I will release my miracle baby. Whatever miracle that is about to be born in your life, whether it's a financial miracle, it will be born. 
Whether it's your wedding, it will be born. Somebody said it will be born. So you must understand that the enemy wants to come against what you see. Now the Bible says, write the vision down. It says, for it may take long. It says, but what? In, 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 in uh, Habakkuk 2, from verse 2, let's go back there, where we started from. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Hazon. Vision there is Hazon. And make it plain on tablets. That he may run who reads it. My God. Verse 3. It says for the vision. For her zone. Is yet for an appointed time. But at the end. It will speak. What God shows you. No matter how people may try to silence you. It will speak. I say, what you are seeing in the spirit, it will answer your enemies. It will speak. Somebody say, what I'm seeing in the spirit, say the divine concept that God is giving me now, it will speak. So never just be in your house and say, Papa, I'm believing your God. No, there's nothing like that. Nothing like that. Go and register a company. Yes. Begin to write what you are thinking you must do. Yes. I'm, I'm home. No, go and register something. Pray harder. Yes. Work harder. Yes. I pray tonight that your vision will happen. Yes. Say has on. Yes. This is why you see something and you do it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? God wants the church, God wants the church to possess what belongs to the church. Oh, yeah. It is for the inheritance of the saints. Yes. So I must tell you today as your spiritual father oh, yeah. that you are joking. Mm-hmm. You can't just be living like that. Something must be done. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Anything you've been seeing, dreaming, any vision you have, it must manifest. I command in the name of Jesus. It will happen in the name of Jesus. Your project will happen in the name of Jesus. Your project will happen in the name of Jesus. Your plan will happen in the name of Jesus. Your career will happen in the name of Jesus. What you see in your career shall manifest. Your calling shall come to pass. Your ministry shall grow. In the name of Jesus. That's my prayer for you. You need to know this. We, we are praying. We are praying. Pray for your vision. I'm telling you. Pray for your vision. Do you know what happened? There was a man by the name Nehemiah. And this man had a vision. He wanted to rebuild the walls. Now when he went to, to rebuild the walls, there, there was a guy by the name St. Ballard. And Tobiah. They said, no, we'll stop his vision. No reason. What did he do? Nothing. They just wanted to mess up the vision. Some of you, there are demons somewhere. They have been monitoring you for years. Anything you want to do, it has never, it has never prospered. You put money here, it perishes. You put your energy here, it, nothing works. You put something here because the devil hates your vision. This is why tonight is very important because we are praying that that thing will never happen again. Where the enemy stops you, he will never stop you again. I stand against the enemy. I rebuke the enemy. I command the enemy. Not again. I say not again. Have you noticed it? Have you checked it? When you try something, he stops it. You try something, he stops it. And the other people, they're trying the same thing. Things are moving. Why are you? It means that you are a target. Why are you? Same thing, others are doing it and things are happening with you. Why are you? Can't you discern? Are you blind? You are a target here. The enemy is putting his energy on you. He wants to finish you. 
He wants you to become a nobody. But by the blood of Jesus, the Bible says by the blood of the Lamb, they overcame him. And by the word of their testimony, they overcame him. We invoke the blood of Jesus tonight. We overcome the enemy in the name of Jesus. Some say in the name of Jesus. Say my vision will come to pass. All my plans will come to pass in the name of Jesus.